Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is Simon Gertsen recording Simon Says for mtgoacademy.com. And this episode is an answer to all the people that are saying that Return to Ravnica has become a stale limited format and there is really not much to be learned from that. I completely disagree. The first reason is that Return to Ravnica offers one of the deepest single set limited experiences I can remember. And the second reason is that for the first time ever, we are basically experiencing and learning a limited format, which is going to almost repeat itself in the next set. For those that don't know, Gatecrash is going to be drafted um, as a standalone expansion, basically. And it's going to have five guilds, just like Return to Ravnica will. So this opening discussion is called Mirror Image to show you why that's so important. Now, when we look at Return to Ravnica, we have this simple guild layout. We have the five colors, which is basically the um, pentagon you find on magic card backs, except that black and red have switched position. And you can see the five guilds here with Azorius, Izzet, Rakdos, Golgari, and Selesnya. Now, you all know that in Gatecrash we are going to have the opposing pairs uh, of this pentagon as guilds, so Gatecrash is going to look like this. Now, I said that we are basically looking at the same format, at the same, same structure, but you could argue that this is a completely different structure, but when you look at it like this, you still see that Gatecrash follows the exact same laws as Return to Ravnica has. We have Boros, Gruul, Simic, Dimir, and Orzov as the guilds. But now when you're drafting white, you have to um, realize that you aren't looking for green cards to pair um, white with or blue cards because Selesnya and Azorius aren't there, but now you will have Boros and Orzovs and so on. Now, that means that the most of the things we have learned during Return to Ravnica are going to hold up for Gatecrash. And that means that every single draft you do now will help you during the whole course of this limited format. Now, it's it might sound simple, but just like Return to Ravnica, Gatecrash is going to be multicolored. And we already know quite a bit of things that immediately follow from that. The first thing is that gold cards are just slightly stronger than uh, monocolored cards. And those are just slightly stronger than um, artifacts, simply because there is a cost associated to the having more than one color. And of course, that makes signaling more complicated. It's, it's just a, a more difficult decision if you want to pick a single colored card or if you want to pick a, um, a gold card, but also what do you do when there is a second, third pick gold card that's not even in one of your colors? Do you actually abandon everything? Do you um, take it for a signal? Or is your right neighbor actually in, this, in the guild he's passing cards off simply because he took a gold card over a strong monocolored card? So that's relevant during drafting, but a multicolored set also has an impact on the gameplay. And one thing where it's particularly important is the color screw, because if you have a high amount of gold cards, of multicolored cards in your deck, then drawing only one of your two manas is going to um, hinder you from casting more spells compared to a regular um, draft format with uh, no guild structure. So having good mana is even more important and just like Return to Ravnica, Gatecrash is going to look um, pretty fast or at least tempo oriented and that means that you probably can't afford to stumble too long. Now there is ample in guild fixing. We already know that there are going to be uh, guild gates and key runes for example but there probably isn't going to be too much in the sense of off guild fixing. So you don't want to be the person uh, that's drafting two colors that aren't connected by the guild circle we looked at before. Now, I already talked about this. There are the five guilds of Gatecrash, just like we had them in Ravnica. 
And these guilds translate into five archetypes, five draft archetypes, and basically the whole limited meta game immediately. Not only for draft, but also for sealed, but we are looking at draft now. And in my experience from Return to Ravnica, any non-guild decks are probably a trap. You don't really want to go that route. It might work out sometimes, but it's not what this set was designed to do. And in as an immediate consequence, there's really only five decks to draft. And that's much less than what we see in, in core set draft or in a regular expansion uh, expert sets. Simply because you can usually combine any two colors, which gives you 10 possible decks. So having only five decks that you have to share at a table of eight is actually um, quite the feat. Now, that also means that if you pick a monocolored card, it's not going to fit in a lot of decks. It's just going to fit in two out of the five possible decks of the format, the main decks of the format. And if you pick a gold card of a certain guild, it's only going to fit into one of five overall deck types. So you always have to be aware how restrictive this limited format is with regards to your early picks. Now, last but not least, Gatecrash, just like Return to Ravnica, will be explored. And this exploration is going to take part in stages. And you will be able to gain an edge if you skip ahead or if you are just um, ahead on the learning curve with Gatecrash. And I believe that Return to Ravnica teaches us quite a lot of things about this exploration phase as well. So I believe that the first stage of exploration is always keyword guided and just like uh, you see cards like unleash populate scavenge you you want to try out the keywords and the mechanics of the of the set of course and that leads to very obvious cards uh, that you want in your deck that are certainly going to be good but you don't really form a cohesive deck yet but you just pick cards that appear good within the boundaries of the format and an effect that we saw during stage one of Return to Ravnica drafting was that the easy guilds had better match win percentages and better records and were um, just overall more successful. But, well, the, the best example is, of course, Celestia, which was very, very successful, but also Rakdos because the aggressive decks were preying on people not really knowing what to do and trying out all kinds of stuff. But we have seen over time that this wasn't because there was an unbalance in the guilds, but because it was just more difficult to draft the spell-oriented Izzet or the uh, late-game-oriented Gogari decks that we see now. The stage 2 I call archetype-guided, archetype-based, and that's where non-obvious key cards uh, become much more important and for me the the defining card of this limited format of, of Return to Ravnica's limited format has to be Knightly Valor. I think that's uh, basically a card that wasn't fully understood until quite late in the format but it's still a stage two card because at a certain point everybody had, had picked up on it and in stage two that's also the time where we see decks getting a clear st strategic direction and a positioning within the limited meta game, um, which leads us to stage three, where you really aren't drafting, exploring the format anymore, but you have five ideal decks, ideal guild decks that you want to craft basically any time. You have the Golgari deck, you have the Selesnya deck, you have the Azarius deck, the Izzet deck, the Rakdos deck. Um, and you just know exactly what you want. You know your pick orders. You know that you have to take Giant Growth highly in, in Golgari. You know that you need Knightly Valors and Sunspire Griffins in any white deck. And so on and so on. You actually, well, just like in regular formats, you, you get to know which rares are actually good and which just look good. And what also happens in Stage 3 is that you not only look at perfecting your own deck but you also start picking up on countermeasures to other strategies just realizing that as a simple example realizing that bound spells are very good in in the, the format which is dominated by um people making their 
creatures larger and larger, uh, risking two for ones on the way. And, well, also other ways to, for example, bead the combat trick heavy Selesnya decks that always have the right answer whenever you block, finding, finding ways to actually get around that to craft uh, combat in your favor. And of course, still respect the both the aggressive strategies and the the control strategies, which are all available in this in this format. So, I hope that this has both uh, made you excited to explore Gatecrash, but also shown you that there's still quite a lot to learn from Return to Ravnica. Even if you might be uh, one of the people who thinks that it has become a little bit stale. Enjoy the draft and see you next time. Bye bye.